Hey there, my name is Matt Wallace, and we're here in my studio in Los Angeles, California, right across from the world famous Sound City Studios. And uh, I'm here with Native Instruments to illustrate the differences between chorus and flanger and phaser. So when I was about 13 years old, I was in bands, uh, you know, playing music, writing music, and I was always kind of the nerdy dude who decided to capture our genius on uh, cassette tapes and we kind of had this uh, makeshift way of recording things and then overdubbing and so that's kind of how I got my start and then eventually I built a studio in my parents garage in the hopes that I would make my own record well uh, unfortunately my friends found out about the fact that I had a studio so they wanted me to record their music and so once I started doing that of course I wasn't able to do my own record and that was like 30 years ago so I don't think my record's gonna come out. But I try to, you know, take that knowledge and enthusiasm uh, with every artist I work with and every band and try to keep that kind of uh, momentum and excitement going. So anyway, with, uh, with Flanger, it has that kind of what you would hear is like a kind of a jet sound, kind of a whooshing sound. And that's because it comes from this small variance in in time between one and five milliseconds. And so that's kind of what creates that. And what, what you do is you can set the, the rate so that, that it can go slowly between them and you can hear the whooshing subtly, uh, but not too fast, or you can turn it really fast and it'll be like very rapid and kind of vibrating. And usually with all, most flangers, you can set the, what's called, called the blend. So you can have just like a little hint of it or a lot of it. And then uh, back to coursing, same kind of thing. You've got a rate, so you can set it so it's fast or slow, so that it's like really noticeable or subtle. And again, chorus is more delay between say 10 and 20 milliseconds. There's more delay going on, and there's a bit of a detune, which will help kind of re or create that idea of a dual instruments. And then you get into something which is called phasing, and phasing is different from those two in that there's these electronically generated peaks and valleys in the sound. Um, and with that, you can, you can uh, there's a low frequency oscillator and that will, you can set so that it does slow sweeps or fast sweeps. So they're all kind of in the same ballpark, but they do have distinctly different sounds. I think they have slightly different applications. Yes, they can each mimic each other to an extent, especially between phasing and flanging, they can become more obvious, whereas coursing tends to be more subtle. So when I was mixing this track, I, um, again, just want a little bit of kind of ear candy going on. And so on the overheads of the drums, I put a little bit of flare and you'll hear it. I'm gonna actually just do this one with the track in so you can kind of hear that it sounds a little bit, sounds okay, and then it comes in and it just adds a, a nice color to it. So here we are without it. So once you click it in, it has kind of a little bit of a syrupy kind of feel to it. Here it is soloed up. So that's the kind of thing that, you know, it doesn't necessarily make or break a song, but it can make or break a mix where you're trying to basically recreate what people can't see visually when you're listening to music because you, know, you don't get to see a band doing their thing and that gets you excited. So in mixing, you try to recreate little moments of that so that it, the mix feels exciting. So for me, putting that in there makes the drum sound kind of a little bit larger than life, a little more exciting. And when you listen with headphones, it's one of those kind of things you can kind of, uh, I don't know, just sounds great to me. I, I like these kind of things. This actually was really cool and effective. I had a mix with an 808 bass which sounds good, but it was right in the middle, and I just wanted it to be a little bit wider, and uh, Coral worked really well for that. So here it is by itself. Now it's in. If you sit right in the middle, it's really, really subtle, but it just kind of widens out. See, I take it out, it goes mono, click it on. If you're sitting in the middle, it's just like a subtle uh, mono turn to stereo. And this is the kind of thing where you can do on a bunch of instruments if you want. You could put this one in the middle with some choral, use another one with some phases, you know, that, that's, you can do all kinds of fun stuff with it. 
Here we go. So here's a song that sometimes if you want to create some excitement or movement, again, you don't want to do too many overdubs, you can add little things to the overheads of the drums, the overhead cymbal ones. And, and I actually use phases on this one track because I thought it added a little bit of a kind of interest to this track. So let's see. So let me solo it without it first, and you'll hear what happens when you click it in. So there it is by itself. And then I put in phases. So it completely just changed this whole thing. So in the track, so this is pretty interesting. Actually, the band didn't ultimately go with this, but this is kind of where I went with it because I thought it was pretty cool. So here it is without phases. That's with the phases in there. Almost sounds like a little percussion, like a little tabla. And that's, that's just phases. It's pretty crazy. I mean, it's really interesting that these effects, if you really dive into them, you can really go far with it. And you know, one of the, my things I learned early on as a producer, and that is, I always wanted gear that could be taken too far to the point you can actually ruin a track. And I felt if you had that kind of equipment and that kind of capability, it really opens up your world to really doing things that are creative. Because I, I spent a long time where we, you know, we always kind of just turned the knobs a little bit and we had like a nice little sound, but, but I want stuff that I can go too far and then kind of come back. And that to me is kind of how I've really approached production, whether it's helping a band arrange things or trying to get performances out of people or mixing. I like it when you can go too far and you go, wow, that's too much. And you bring it back a little bit and then you tuck it into a track and it really sounds good. So anyway, that's kind of the scoop uh, with all the mod pack things, um, you know, with the uh, phases and flare and coral. And I um, just want to say thanks for coming down to the studio and hanging out with Native Instruments. 